golf. Today's episode, we're going to go over how cheap it is to build your own backyard golf green. Heck, if I can do it, you guys can do it. This is a vlog channel that we go over the trials and tribulations of our backyard golf hole. We have six tee boxes currently. Plan on putting more in the spring. Now, we've done all this golf hole construction in-house with our own equipment, our own manpower. So do me a favor right now. Go down in the comments. Tell me what you think we had in this. Mm-hmm. So at the end of this episode, you're going to know exactly what we had in this golf hole, and I'm going to try to speculate what I think it would cost you if you had to pay somebody to do some of the things that we were able to do in-house. Spud Run Golf Vlog, how much does it cost for your own backyard golf green? Let's go. They say luck is when preparation meets opportunity. I've dreamed of having my own golf hole for several years now. In my teenage years, I worked at golf courses. In my 20s, I was on the golf board at a local golf course. Our construction company has done several projects at local golf courses, mostly redoing bunkers, drainage issues. So I've built a little bit of knowledge before I started on my own golf hole. At the ripe old age of 40, the stars finally aligned and we were able to buy our dream piece of property, 140 acres here in the foothills of Appalachia in Southern Ohio. Now, obviously a backyard golf hole can require different amounts of land. It depends on how far you want to go into it. I've seen some different YouTube videos where people just have a backyard putting green. We wanted to stretch out to have several holes, fairways, and different tee boxes. I'll not include the cost of land in this story simply because it can vary greatly on land. We're going to break this down. There's four main components to the construction of your own backyard golf hole. Design, your site layout. So that's where you can go crazy. This is something you can obviously do in-house yourself. You know your capabilities, you know your footprint that you got to work with. That's where you're gonna start. You're gonna start with design your hole and let's not forget to include future plans. Let's think forward. Let's think about maybe I can do this now, but in five years I can do this. So keep that in mind when you're doing your site layout, your site work and design. Also another critical step in your site layout is wind direction. Where's the sun at? How close are you to your available water sources? Now to step two on your golf hole. Let's talk about materials. How much gravel, how much sand, what type of pipe, what type of seed. Several components will go into this. That's something you also got to get laid out before even beginning your golf hole construction. On to your actual site work. Probably going to be the biggest factor that most people cannot perform themselves. The site work is going to most likely involve heavy equipment. Lucky for us, we could do all this in-house. The site work is also going to include subsoil preparations. That includes your buildup. If you're wanting to undulate your fairway, if you're wanting to build your green up, elevate your tee boxes, that's all considered in the site work plan. And the site work's also going to completely go through final grading and your seeding. And the last, probably most important consideration on a backyard golf hole is your ongoing maintenance. Once that golf hole is complete, that's where the time and money is going to really come in long term. You've got to be in this project to win it because that's where the project's going to really take it to the next level with your ongoing maintenance. Not only the cost, but the time required and the knowledge to foresee problems before they happen on the green, the preventative maintenance on insecticides, fungicides, it's really going to test your skills. That ongoing maintenance, you're also going to have things like your mowers. How are you going to aerate? How do you irrigate? That's all things long term you need to think about in ongoing maintenance. Now a project like this can have many more variables in it. The sky's the limit on how far you want to go with your golf hole. Maybe you just want a small 10 by 10 putting green in your backyard, but maybe you want something stretched out where you have actually nine tee boxes, nine different approaches which is what we're shooting for here at Spud Run Golf. Now let's jump right into our project here at Spud Run Golf. Now after we had all our design work done, we went to work removing the trees and stumps and then scraped all the topsoil off this green area, saving it for later construction. We build up with the junkier subsoils to get our elevated green. Now this was a very exciting step for me in this process because I started to see things come alive. I could, I could start to see the contours. It was very satisfying. Having three pieces of equipment moving, this took me and my buddies about a day and a half to get accomplished. So that part was kind of free, other than some burnt fuel. So I'm guessing most of the people watching this do not have the access to all the equipment. For our intentions here in this video, if you had to pay somebody to come in with a bulldozer or a track hoe, maybe a dump truck to move stuff around, I'm guessing the site work that we done here would probably be around $10,800. Now that's variable, particular to your location. Now what's really important about that number is it does not include hauling away debris. So if you have a bunch of tree stumps, logs, tree tops, unsuitable soils, if you have to have them hauled off, your price can astronomically go through the roof. Our main green area is roughly 1,800 square feet. Now working the subsoils in, we left this whole green bed area 16 inches low, approximately 16 inches low. Now I had full intentions to build this green as a replica of a real golf green. I didn't want to skimp on any part of this process. So this is where I started to accumulate my cost was at this point. We started doing our drainage. This is where we had to get pipe and gravel. 
for our subsurface drainage. We used four inch drainage tile under this 1800 square foot green. It took us about 80 tons of gravels to go for our drainage under this. With our drainage and pipe, we roughly had about 1600 bucks in that. So that's roughly a dollar and 10 cents a square foot. After our drainage systems were done, we installed a fabric. This fabric is supposed to keep the sand from leaching into the gravel and that'll cost you roughly 30 cents a square foot. We had about 540 bucks in the fabric. The single most important part of your green construction is your root zone material. I directly conferred with experts on this. The root zone material for your green is a very specific material. It's a mixture of sand, soil, and organic materials. The supplier we got from ships all over. They brought it to us from about three hours away. They supply several courses in this area of the United States, even the infamous Oakmont Country Club. I almost concocted my own root zone material to save money. Now looking back, I am super happy that I went with the more expensive stuff. This material provides a great environment for your root zone to really get down there and thrive. And it also provides good drainage. For delivery and all, I had $3,751 in my root zone material. Once we've got all that smoothed out to our correct undulations on our golf green, we've got to move to seed. Now your seed can vary from zone to zone, obviously. We chose bent grass. Now, if you're in a warmer southern environment, you probably want to go with the Bermuda grass. Up here in Ohio, bent grass is the go-to for the best golf greens. All of our fairway and rough areas was a turf-type tall fescue called Titan. When purchasing your seed for your golf green, whether it be Bermuda or bent grass, that's something you just can't go get at Lowe's or Home Depot. That's something you'll have to get from a special supplier. We spent a total of $1,650 on our seed package. Now, I included the seed and also some chemicals to get started. Another 750 bucks was spent on starter fertilizers at the time of application. We did not straw any areas around the green. I didn't want the seed and the straw to get on the green, so we just seeded the area immediately around the green. But on the fairways, we did use straw, and we had another 750 bucks in the straw for the fairway areas at the time. Here's a pro tip. In our area, a wire-tied straw bell will cover about 400 to 450 square feet running it through that straw blower. I'd mentioned before about water supply. We ran a two inch main back to this green area. Our fairway does not have a water supply, but the green does right now. I plan on doing a permanent irrigation system in. Last year we were planning this, we just ran out of time. So for year number one, so far, I've just been using a hose with a normal lawn sprinkler to keep the moisture up in this green. Now I do intend to put an automated irrigation system on this green. It's kind of been a pain in the butt year one, coming back here and making sure it's getting water. I project that to be around 3,800 bucks to do an automated irrigation system around this green. There again, that's doing this project in-house. So some quick math up to this point, it tells me this golf green cost me around $10,500 to get to where we're at. That includes the fairway. Moving forward, we'll have some more costs in irrigation, hoping to get that done soon also. So my buddies, they're out buying side-by-sides, Harleys, all this cool stuff, I agree. And I am super tickled with what we have here in this backyard golf green, this backyard golf hole. I think it's money well spent. So maybe here's what you came for, the million dollar questions. What do I think it would cost you? So I would think it's gonna cost you another twelve dollars to $15,000 if you had to farm out the heavy equipment stuff, the dirt moving, the, uh, the, the heavy lifting, literally the, the stuff that takes equipment that you may or may not have. But still guys, let's say you got twenty twenty-five thousand. dollars 25000 That's to build something real. Albeit, I don't have my tee boxes all done yet. I've got most of the dirt work done, but that's the beauty of Spud Run Golf here. As you guys are on the ground floor here with us, you're gonna be able to see what it's gonna to cost to continue to maintain and build those tee boxes. We've still gotta see those that's coming up. September's right around the corner and we've got such a busy schedule at this golf hole. We've got an aerate top dress. We've got some drainage issues we're gonna do. Seed those tee boxes. I've got ball washers we gotta revamp. All kinds of cool things coming up. So that's why I need you guys to do me a favor. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoy what we've got going on jump in hit the subscribe button we'd love to have you we're trying to build a community here at spud run golf honestly there's not a lot like this out here where some crazy guys build this in his backyard as i always do i'll have my email down in the description after you hit that subscribe button after you hit the like button go down shoot me an email if you got any questions leave a comment i'll answer comments uh, obviously we're a small channel like i said you're in here on the ground floor next up on spud run golf we've got some issues around the green we're going to go into that and i think i've got a solution how to fix that Guys, the Spud Run Golf Vlog coming at you here from Southern Ohio. Thanks for watching. Thanks for playing with us. Spud Run Golf, over and out.